She was stunned to find out that it was Remy LeBleu, LeBeau, Gambit. She couldn't believe it, not because she had feelings for him. She just couldn't believe that he's involved in Jigsaw's latest sick little game. She noticed a knife beside him. She made a grab for it and held it with two of her hands. No, she has four hands. Of course she ha- Is she really an octopus? With two of her hands? Why can't it just say with two- with her hands? Why does it have to say two? I mean, it's implying that she has more than two hands. And no one has more than two hands, unless, you know, they're conjoined twins. Let's continue to read. She hesitated because she didn't want to kill another human being. She was not interested in murder, in murdering, nor ever want to. Especially after the whole ordeal with Mystique. She remembered what Jigsaw had said to her. In some ways, he was right. If Mystique hadn't been resurrected, she, she, would she be a murderer if she was truly dead? Tears were now streaming down her face. But she knew she had to escape the device. She quickly stabbed through Gambit's body, spouting, sprouting out anguish yells. Afterwards, she dug her hands through the insides of his body. Blood was getting all over her, her arms. Finally, she found the key and quickly found the lock connected to the vest. She had ten seconds left and removed the entire vest in five seconds. It dropped to the floor just as the spikes activated. They all looked sharp, sharp and pointy and rusty looking as well. They could have killed her, but she survived. But she didn't feel triumphant as she was still thinking about the words spoken to her. A door finally opened and revealed the same puppet from the TV screen, but this time it was on a red tricycle. It moved towards her. She was shocked and breathed heavily, worried that he'll do something else to her. But the tricycle stopped and the puppet opened its mouth with another pre-recorded message. Congratulations, you're still alive. He, congr he congratulated her? Could this be what happens when someone survives his sick games? Could this be what happens when someone survive his sick games? Did you guys notice the error there? It should said when someone survives his sick games instead of just survive. Let's continue. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. A lot of things went through her mind. Ever sink? Ever sink at those last words. It should say ever since those last words, but it looked like she he accidentally put a space between the C and the E, so it says sink and at those instead of since those. This is why you check your grammar. She often asked herself if she really is grateful to be alive after what she had done. Did she really redeem herself? She broke down crying and backed herself into a nearby wall. Got into a fetal position as she cried before someone rescued her. Let's read the author's note. Well, that's my one shot. Hope I did a good job because this is really my first time with both Saw and X-Men Evolution fandoms. Well, I did an X-Men Evolution one shot before, but this is my first actual one shot of that fandom. Um, if you said that you did an X-Men Evolution one-shot before this fanfic, then this would not be your first fanfic of the of the fandom. This would be like your first fanfic of the Saw fandom. So you completely contradict yourself in that author's note. Wasn't sure if I got Rogue, but I hope you like it anyway. And happy Halloween. Freddy Krueger laugh. Okay, you want my honest opinion about this story? It was okay. It wasn't actually that bad of a story, but what made it not good was all the grammar mistakes. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous, 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 ridiculous. Ridiculous! I mean, it was careless stuff, too. Careless, as in, you know, stupid typos that, you know, you should have noticed. You people, when you write fanfics, really read them before you publish them. Please! Trust me, you won't regret it. It won't harm to read it over again before you publish it. 
I mean, with sync ethos, which is supposed to be since those, I mean, that's ridiculous. And here's a, another problem with this story. It was comma crazy. The sentences were run-on sentences, some of them, and when he did need commas, he didn't use them. Okay, let's count and see how many commas show up in the story. How many commas showed up in the story? Here's your number. 66, 66, 66, 66. Mind you, some of them were needed, but a good chunk of them were not needed. My God, 66 commas. And you know, some of them, it would have been more, but some, he had like a semicolon in some spots too. And if I had counted those, well, I don't think there was as much as the, of those, but still. My God, 66 commas for one story. Look, I'm not saying this is a bad story. This actually is a pretty good story. It's clever, but it's stuff like that that dims a story's overall appeal. You could, ha you could have written the best story in the world, and people are not going to like it because the grammar sucks. And there's some people who wrote really good stories, you know, that have perfect grammar, but the stories aren't good themselves. Mrs. Lovett's Lesson is a, is a good example of that. The story was well written, but the story itself was shit. This story was a good story, but the grammar and the 50 billion commas ruined it. It's not a bad story, though. And I think if this movie Brad guy took the story down, fixed it up, got rid of all the er grammar errors, and, you know, tweaked it a bit and put it back up, I think it would be a pretty successful story. But, you know what, people? This is why you check your grammar. This is why you reread stories out loud. This is why you don't publish stories until you know it's written to the best that it can be written at. So, movie Brad, if you're watching this, please don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean any offense, I'm not saying that your story is bad, but you need to fix it a lot. Get rid of all the commas. Get rid of commas that you do not need, and put commas in where you do need them. And fix little mistakes like sync ethos. It's right at the very end, you know, the last paragraph before the author's note. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it, you listen. I'm going to continue my game. Forty-two minutes! Oh. 